स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया so what i have is i am going to describe two methods of constraint uh, optimization so constraint optimization and we will describe the method via via the hamilton uh, well constraint optimization fine okay so the first method is the penalty function method the first method that i have is the penalty the penalty function method okay so what exactly is this we will see that we are going to change the inequality into an equality constraint by introducing the so called penalty function or in the language of calculus of variation introducing a non holonomic constraint or a differential constraint okay so what we have is consider this system consider the system given by x dot bar which is f of x bar u bar t and i am given also the performance index which is given by j integral of uh, t0 to tf of v of x bar u bar comma t dt and where my x and t are my usual state and control variable so x bar and u bar are my state and control control variables state and control variables and now we look at some inequality constraints so consider consider inequality inequality uh, let us say vector constraints we will look at set of constraints so vector constraints let us say on state variables so g bar of x bar comma t is greater than equal to 0 right so inequality vector constraints so let us to to deal with these vector constraints i am going to introduce a new uh, state variable let us say xn plus 1 okay so the idea is the idea is uh, so so these are uh, these are uh, so these are my constraint optimization problems uh, uh, these are my problems uh, these are more few more methods so we have done one method earlier so uh, these are my uh, other methods as well so so i'm just mentioning uh, you know two more methods in this setup so the idea of this penalty method is as follows we are going to introduce introduce a new state variable we will introduce a new state variable as follows my xn plus 1 Uh, by x n plus one dot is equal to f n plus one of x bar comma t as follows. So this is also this right hand side is written as follows. So this is g one times uh, x. So the the constraint g one that we had, we take a square times h of g one, where h is a heavy side function. Let me write down this expression and it will clear. very soon and so on plus gp uh, of x bar comma t square times h of g uh, gp so suppose we have p uh, inequality constraint condition and where my h of gi are my heavy side function so so h of so where my h of gi is my unit unit heavy side function okay so this is also equal to uh, either 0 or 1 right 
and the zero condition is if my constraint g of x i well g well my constraint is heavy side function if g i of x bar comma t is greater than equal to 0 and if this g i of x bar comma t is less than 0 then I have the following uh, this equal to 1. Notice that when my constraint is negative we are taking a square of the constraint. So, this will always be positive right. So, which means that my right hand side will never be less than 0. So, we will have the minimal value of the right hand side will be 0 right. So, so with that uh, further we need boundary conditions for this new variable. So, uh, further further require the boundary condition to vanish for the new variable require that the new variable the new variable has the boundary condition x n plus 1 at t naught is equal to x n plus 1 at t f is equal to 0 right. So, now we set up the Hamiltonian. So, set up set up my Hamiltonian. So, h of x bar u bar lambda bar now lambda is the uh, is the Lagrange multiplier for n variable system. We also introduce a second Lagrange multiplier which is for the n plus 1th variable and then t ok. So, this is also equal to v of x bar u bar comma t. So, these are all n dimensional vectors vector functions plus lambda bar of t times f of x bar u bar comma t. So, this is the usual Hamiltonian setup, but there is an extra term plus lambda n plus 1 f n plus 1. So, that is the added uh, the added uh, term in the in the Hamiltonian with the constraint right. And then we now apply apply our Hamilton's equation. So, apply optimality condition or Hamilton's equation we see that we have to solve the, the following set of equations x bar dot star is equal to partial h partial lambda right h bar uh, h bar star dot this is the start condition and we see that partial h partial lambda will be f. So, f at x star comma u star comma t. So, this is my optimal condition for the state variables and then of course, we have an extra state variable x n plus 1 that we introduce. So, we need an extra equation. So, x n plus 1 uh, dot star will be partial h partial lambda n plus 1 and this is equal to f n plus 1 at x bar star comma t right. Okay. And then for my co-state variable we also have n plus 1 equations. So, this is my state variables and my co-state variables my co-state variables are lambda bar dot star is minus h minus x and then the extra condition that we have is lambda dot star at n plus 1 is equal to minus h minus x n plus 1 right. So, these are my co-state variables. So, we have 2 n plus 2 equations to be solved right. Notice that uh, the only dependence of h on x n plus 1 is via lambda uh, lambda n plus 1 right. So, h does not explicitly contain x n plus 1 as such ok. So, let me just highlight this this penalty function method with an example right. So, so, let us look at an example. So, this is example number uh, what have we got here example number 3. So, example number 3 the example is consider the system this is a second order system and the system is given by x 1 dot 
is equal to x 2 and x 2 dot is equal to u. So, this is a similar system that we had solved in our previous example and this time my performance index g of u, u comma well, x comma u right. So, how did we really represent j? We represented in the form of uh, j right. So, well we say j fine ok. So, j of x bar comma u this is half this is given to be half from t 0 t 0 to t f of u square well this is x 1 square plus u square and d t right and 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 further it is given that the final point t f is free and the final state the final state uh, x of t f is also free and the control u t is constrained uh, further I am given some constraint uh, the control function function u t is constrained is constrained as uh, u from minus 1 to plus 1 right and this is for all t from t 0 to t f ok. And further I am also given that x 2 is constrained the state variable the state variable uh, the state variable x 2 uh, x 2 uh, is constrained right ok uh, is given by the following constraint. So, x 2 the absolute value of x 2 is bounded above by 3 right for all t uh, uh, for all t in our interval under consideration right ok for all t s this is all under closed interval ok. So, uh, so now what we have is this this uh, absolute value can be changed into two inequality constraints notice that my my state constraints are as follows my state constraints are as follows I have x 2 plus 3. So, x 2 plus 3 must be greater than equal to 0. So, let me call this constraint as g 1 greater than equal to 0 and my constraint 3 minus x 2 is greater than equal to 0. So, call it g 2 which is greater than equal to 0 right. So, my state constraints are as follows and then I set up my Hamiltonian ok. So, these are essentially these are my constraint problems where we are putting constraint on the state variables right. In my previous discussion where we were discussing the Pontryagin minimum principle we were putting constraint on the control variable. Uh, so, that methodology remains as long as we are putting constraint on control variable. So, uh, so, let me just slightly mention the constraint optimization is what we are do, doing is the constraint on the constraint on on the state variables ok. The control variable you follow the same as my uh, as my Pontryagin minimum principle fine ok. So, we set up the Hamiltonian the Hamiltonian this time will be h is is going to be well v plus lambda. So, let me write down this the complete Hamiltonian. So, this is going to be v plus lambda times f times lambda n plus 1 times f n plus 1. So, so let me write it down. So, that is my step 1 ok. So, my Hamiltonian is x 1 square by 2 plus u square by 2. So, that is my v and then plus plus lambda 1 uh, lambda 1 plus lambda 1 x 2 plus lambda 2 
u that is my that is my lambda times f in fact it's a dot product and plus plus i have the last variable plus lambda 3 so lambda n plus 1 times fn plus 1 the the way fn plus 1 is set up is using my heavy side function using the two constraints i have so g1 square is x2 plus 3 whole square times the heavy side function of x2 plus 3 and plus uh, 3 minus x2 whole square times the heavy side function 3 minus x2 and then uh, 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 well so that is it. So, this is my Hamiltonian and then I have to set up the equations for my state variables and co-state variables. So, we will have 2 n plus 2 equations. So, let us do that. So, step 2 step 2 is x 1 uh, x 1 star dot well that has to be partial h partial x 1 par partial lambda 1 that will give me x 2 and x 2 star dot will be with respect to lambda 1 and that will lambda 2 and that will give me u right and then my x 3 uh, star dot will be again with respect to lambda 3 I am going to get the f n plus 1. So, this becomes f n plus 1 which is uh, x 2 plus 3 whole square uh, the heavy side function x 2 plus 3 plus 3 minus x 2 square the heavy side function 3 minus x 2. Okay. And then my uh, other co-state variables are lambda 1 dot star is equal to minus h uh, partial h partial x 1 this is lambda 1 dot star is minus x 1 star. Uh, so, we are just differentiating. So, lambda 2 dot star will be minus del h del x 2 and we see if we are to differentiate with respect to x 2 x 2 appears x 2 appears as lambda 1. So, we get minus lambda 1 and then we will have a huge expression minus 2 times lambda 3 times the derivative of f n plus 1 with respect to x 2. So, I, I leave it here let the students complete this expression uh, and also lambda 3 dot star is minus del h del x 3 uh, which is also equal to uh, so h uh, let us see h does not have a variable x 3. So, this will be 0 right. So, which means that immediately I see that lambda 3 is a constant lambda 3 is a constant. Okay. So, what have we got? So, then I have to solve these 2 n plus 2 equations and I have constraints 2 n plus 2 constraints x 1 to x 3 and lambda 1 to lambda 3 uh, this is should be solvable. The next step is from here I find find my optimal control u star. Uh, so, so, to find the optimal control u star, so let me see the steps here. Okay. So, to find the optimal control u star, let us look at the Hamiltonian again. Notice that in the Hamiltonian u appears here as a well, it is u square by 2 and this is what have we deleted here. So, this is lambda, so this is v. Yeah. So, u appears here as I have circled and u also appears here. So, which means that if we were to minimize or maximize the Hamiltonian with respect to this function u, we only need to look at the circled quantity. right? So, let us look at only the circled quantity and minimize the Hamiltonian. To find u star, consider, consider the modified Hamiltonian h u which is u square by 2 plus lambda 2 times u. These are the only two terms which contains my variable u and from here when I take the derivative of h u with respect to u, I see that this is u plus lambda 2 is equal to 0 or from here I see that u is equal to minus lambda 2. Right? 
okay and then then uh, well of course we have another constraint that we have so far not considered and that is the constraint on the on the control variable itself that u cannot be bounded u is bounded above by 1 right so so that has to be also included so note that since since u is u of t is bounded uh, bounded above by 1 u of t is bounded above by 1 i see that my constraint variable u star of t is is plus 1 if if notice that u is minus lambda 2 so if lambda 2 attains the minimum value or lambda 2 is attains the left boundary value then u attains the maximum value which is plus 1 otherwise if lambda 2 is strictly between between minus 1 and 1 then u star is nothing but minus lambda 2 star otherwise if lambda 2 lambda 2 is greater than 1 then u is minus 1 right okay u star is minus 1 fine okay so what have we got uh, so so that is how uh, so so all i have to do now is well we have six variables six unknowns six equations the unknowns are x1 x2 x3 and lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 and from there when we plug our u is minus lambda 2 provided it is not on the boundary right so the control is found right away from our solution so so i would just end the discussion in this example by saying that x i's and u i's well x i's and lambda i's are found are found from step 2 right x i's and lambda i's are found from step 2 and that should uh, that should be the end of the discussion in this example okay so that highlights our penalty function method where the penalty is uh, placed on the state variable okay we are now going to uh, wrap up our discussion by highlighting yet another method the final method namely the the slack variable method the slack variable uh, slack variable method so what exactly is this method also known as the valentines method right so i am going to discuss this valentines method so we introduce a slack variable to change our state inequality into an equality so that is the whole idea of this slack variable method so introduce introduce a slack a slack variable introduce a slack variable to change the state change the state inequality the state inequality constraint state the inequality constraint into an equality constraint equality constraint okay so now we are going to consider our again let us consider the statement of the problem and within the problem we will introduce our inequality constraint right so consider again consider the optimal control system the system given by x bar dot is equal to f of x bar u comma t and i am given that x at t0 is x0 let me call this setup as one my plant condition which minimizes minimizes our performance index j which is f of x of tf comma tf this is typically going to be our uh, cost function plus plus an integral term from t0 to tf uh, v of x bar comma u bar comma t uh, dt right uh, so this is minimizing the performance index subject to subject to 
the state variable subject to the state variable inequality state variable inequality given by s of x bar comma t is less than equal to 0. So, that is subject to this inequality right. So, I am now switching well I am now switching my notation where my cost function is denoted by f. So, this is my cost function for in the Bolza problem that we discussed earlier and my notation s is the state inequality constraint right. So, now I am going to change this inequality constraint into an equality constraint by introducing a new variable known as the slack variable. So, introduce introduce the slow so called slack variable slack variable alpha uh, such that such that now s of x comma t plus alpha square let us say typically a function of the independent variable t by 2 is equal to 0. Notice that alpha is is real valued it is a it is a real valued function and uh, and uh, the square of alpha will always be positive which means s is negative alpha square by 2 or s is less than 0 and equal to 0 only when alpha is 0. So, certainly this uh, new equality certainly satisfies the original inequality with this new variable right. So, well our the assumption here is that s is differentiable up to some orders. Let us say the constraint is differentiable up to p orders. So, from here I can get p different constraints. So, so, so what is the idea of changing one equation into p equation is sometimes the function alpha of t is not uh, solvable. So, rather than solving this equality we directly you know change this equality into set of simpler uh, equations in which the final equation uh, is the is such that alpha can be explicitly expressed in terms of other variables right. So, what did I say? So, let me call this uh, this condition let me call this as 1 prime and this as 1. So, so what I have said is s s is the p th order s is the p th order constraint s is a p th order constraint and and uh, such that p th order constraint such that the p th order contains contains u of t explicitly ok. The p th order contains u of t explicitly. Okay, so, then what, what shall we do? Again since it is a p th order constraint means that s is smoothly differentiable up to order p. So, we exactly do that. So, differentiating differentiating 1 uh, p times I am uh, p times with respect to my independent variable t right and I am going to get the following set of relations s 1 of x comma t plus alpha alpha 1 is equal to 0 and then s 2 of x comma t plus alpha well we differentiate this alpha 1 square plus alpha alpha 2 is equal to 0 and so on right. And finally, we will have s p plus uh, terms plus terms involving involving alpha alpha 1 uh, alpha p right set equal to 0. So, what have we got? We see uh, let me call this uh, set of equations as 2 and uh, in 2 well the last the p th equation is such that I can explicitly write my unknown function alpha in terms of s p and other variables involved and then we back substitute the other variables from the previous set of equations ok given by 2. So, so what have we got is, so let me just say, so where 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 my s i is uh, is 
the regular derivative del s del i well d i d s the i th derivative and my alpha i is uh, the regular derivative d i alpha by d t i and uh, what else. Uh, so, my, my p th equation the p th equation that I just derived gives me uh, u the control variable explicitly as a function of uh, all the other quantities that I have alpha to alpha p right. So, so this is from from my p th equation let me call this as condition number 3 right. So, that is the that is how we find the control from the p th equation. So, we have to differentiate p times. So, which means our uh, so, our modified plant condition or modified equation 1 prime modified 1 prime uh, originally it was uh, is now x bar dot is f of x bar comma u u now is g of x bar comma alpha comma alpha p uh, comma t and I am given that x at t equal to t 0 is x 0 and further I have that alpha dot is equal to alpha 1 and alpha 1 dot is equal to alpha 2 and alpha p minus 1 dot is equal to alpha p right. So, these are these are my uh, notations and notice that uh, for so these are my new set of state conditions or sorry plant conditions where now I have introduced certain new variables right alpha alpha 1 alpha 2 to alpha p minus 1 and with the following initial condition alpha at t equal to t 0 is alpha t 0 and alpha 1 at t equal to t 0 is alpha 1 at t 0 and so on alpha p minus 1 at t equal to t 0 is alpha p minus 1 at t 0 right. Okay. So, finally, finally my modified performance index is seen to be as follows. So, j now is f of x of t f comma t f x bar of t f comma t f integral from t 0 to t f v of x bar comma g x bar comma alpha comma alpha p of t right d t and then well from here. Uh, so, this is my modified uh, performance index and finally, my modified initial condition modified initial condition I need to find all these uh, this is this is still these are still unknowns right these values here that I have just mentioned that can found can that can be actually found from our set of p equations given by by 2 right. So, from here I can find the initial values to all the alpha is. So, modified initial condition from from my set of equations 2 are as follows. So, alpha at t 0 is neg is square root of negative 2 s at x of t 0 by t 0 and alpha 1 at t 0 is minus s 1 at x at t 0 divided by alpha at t 0 and so on. We can find all the values this is from 2 itself right. So, so we are ready to state all the equations we have how many equations have we mentioned well I call this as 4 and I call this I have 3 as well 3 2 and 1 1 primes ok. So, all my relations from 1 1 prime 2 3 and 4 they said they are going to describe my unconstrained unconstrained problem problem for for the uh, for the control uh, for the control uh, variable 
uh, variable u or alpha p whatever it is because the pth equation will be given alpha p and that will that will directly give me the relation bit uh, that will directly give me the function u right okay and and we could we could apply we could apply the the pontragon minimum principle if we have if there is a constraint if there is a constraint constraint on if there is a constraint on u right we could always do that so quickly let me just summarize how we set up the problem so now we have slightly uh, uh, slightly more equations to solve so define so we are going to define instead of n vectors but not n but n plus p vectors so n plus p state vectors define n plus p state vectors as z of t is equal to x bar of t alpha of t comma alpha p minus 1 of t right okay we define our new plant condition so these are my vectors so this is n dimensional vector and we have p dimensional vectors right so i am rewriting the entire problem in an n plus p dimensional state vector formulation so my new plant condition is z dot is equal to f of z of t comma alpha p of t comma t notice that i have i am very conveniently replacing my control function with alpha p because the pth equation will yield my control where where f is an n plus p uh, dimensional vector it's an n plus p dimensional vector representing representing the rhs of my condition 4 right so we had all the equations that we had described and finally i define define my hamiltonian i define my hamiltonian which is again the same h is equal to v plus lambda f where my lambda is n plus p uh, p dimensional lagrange multiplier n plus p dimensional lagrange multiplier and finally uh, let me complete this description by writing down the equations to solve i have my state my state vector equations my well state variables in the form of a vector equation my state variables are z dot of t will be partial h partial lambda bar right so that's how my state variables are and then of course with with given bound initial condition i need the initial conditions as well and of course my co state my co state equations are as follows M lambda uh, bar dot this is z bar dot so lambda bar dot t is minus h z right where where now i have that uh, lambda of t f is f x comma 0 comma 0 so my uh, f x is an n d problem and this is my uh, so notice that uh, only the the first n uh, n components of lambda will be will be non zero the rest are all set equal to uh, equal to 0 the the p values right and finally my control variable my control uh, variable is given by uh, del h del alpha p right so differentiating h with respect to alpha p or h alpha p i know that h is not a function of alpha alpha p so that will be 0 and from here i can get uh, my my control solution u star okay so that completes that completes the description of our slack variable method which completely converts the inequality into an equality and then converts our uh, our original system into a slightly lengthier system but 
system which can be treated as an unconstrained optimization problem. So, all these, uh, so in, in this lecture I am going to end my discussion on the optimal control theory and mention that students are requested to uh, look at the text I have highlighted in my introductory video on the reference for more problems. And in the next lecture, I am going to start with another application of calculus of variation, namely looking at the motion of carbon nanorods. So, thank you very much for listening.